Hey yo, what's the deal? You know who it is. It's the Don. Yeah, Tony Teflon. Yeah, House Teflon. We pull the strings. Yeah, what's going on? What's going on? And uh, I'm back at you with another video and all that goodness and stuff like that. And I'd just like to say uh, I had a great time on my last video with James Johnson Esquire and his people, the Small Council. I had a good time on that and a uh, great time and actually just like I said before if you watched it that I was actually the first time I ever really got a chance to speak about the book to people live and stuff like that and it was a thrill for me to actually do that after all these years of reading the book and stuff like that so thank you again for having me on um, but uh, I know I was going to do uh, the uh, prophecies video and I know that's what people want to see and I, and I want to do that too but I have, what I'm going to do is I have, I think, somebody who's going to try, I'm going to try to do it with somebody, the last one, just wrap up everything. So that's what I'm, that's why I'm waiting on that, and that's why I'm holding on that. But we got the season finale coming up, I'm real excited about that, so I figured, people have been going back to my old videos, and, and when I first started doing these videos, like, I didn't think anyone was going to watch it, you know what I mean? I just did it just to do it, and I did... My first video, one of them was the uh, When's the Winner Dion chapter, one of my favorite chapters that uh, George R. R. Martin ever written in any book. And uh, if I have to go with the books that are out, my favorite chapter in those books, I would think it's probably out of all the books. I like the uh, epilogue chapter in Dance with Dragons, I think is probably the best she wrote. So, I figured since people want to do a long, ask me to do long video, longer videos, and I haven't been doing longer videos. I will give you a longer video. I will do the full review of the Theon Wins the Winner chapter right now. The whole thing. And I will break this down so that there is no questions whatsoever about this chapter. And I love this chapter because I think it reveals a lot of things. And as always, we're going to really do it. The best way to do it is to listen to it together. So this is about a pretty long chapter. So we'll be in here for a little bit. So ready? Here we go. Dion. The king's voice was choked with anger. You are a worse pirate than Salador San. Dion Greyjoy opened his eyes. His shoulders were on fire, and he could not move his hands. For half a heartbeat, he feared he was back in his old cell, under the dread fort. That the jumble of memories inside his head was no more than the residue of some fever dream. I was asleep, he realized. That or passed out from the pain. When he tried to move, he swung from side to side, his back scraping against stone. He was hanging from a wall inside a tower, his wrists chained to a pair of rusted iron rings. The air reeked of burning peat. The floor was hard-packed dirt. Wooden steps sprouted up inside the walls to the roof. He saw no windows. The tower was dank, dark, and comfortless. Its only furnishings a high-backed chair and a scarred table resting on three trestles. No privy was in evidence, though Theon saw a chamber pot in one shadowed alcove. The only light came from the candles on the table. His All right, so right here we pick up Theon, right? Captured. Now we know before he got taken to Stannis, Stannis, and you see he is captured right here. And this is a... Uh, a plot point towards the pink letter. So in the pink letter, we know that it says that Ramsey has wants Reek. He wants his Reek. So that is a reason to think Ramsey does not want have Reek because we see right here Stannis is alive, and he has Theon, and they're not calling him Reek. They're calling him Theon, and you hear them say that the chamber reeks, but they don't call him Reek. So that's important that he is Theon at this point. He has regained his sanity, and now he is Theon. All right, so here we go. His feet tangled six feet off the floor. My brother's debts, the king was muttering. Joffrey's too, though that baseborn abomination was no kin to me. Theon twisted in his chains. He knew that voice, Stannis. Theon Greyjoy chortled. A stab of pain went up his arms from his shoulders to his wrists. All he had done, all he had suffered, Mo Caelan and Barrowton and Winterfell, Abel and his washerwomen, crow food and his umbers. The trek through the snows, all of it had only served to exchange one tormentor for another. Your grace? A second voice said softly, Pardon, but your ink is frozen. The Bravosi, Theon knew. 
what was his name? Tycho. Tycho something. Perhaps a bit of heat. I know a quicker way. Stannis drew his dagger. For an instant, Theon thought that he meant to stab the banker. You'll never get a drop of blood from that one, my lord, he might have told him. The king laid the blade of his knife against the ball of his left thumb and slashed. There, I will sign in my own blood. That ought to make your masters happy. If it please your grace, it will please the Iron Bank. Stannis dipped a quill in the blood welling from his thumb and scratched his name across the piece of parchment. You will depart today. Lord Bolton may be on us soon. I will not have you caught up in the fighting. That would be my preference as well. The Brophosi slipped the roll of parchment inside a wooden tube. I hope to have the honor of calling on your grace again when you are seated on your iron throne. You hope to have your gold, you mean. Save your pleasantries. It is coin I need from Bravos, not empty courtesy. Tell the god outside I have need of Justin Massey. It would be... All right. So right here, we have Stannis Baratheon, Theon, realizing he is captured by Stannis Baratheon, and realizing he's in trouble. Not that he's there, that Stannis is there to help him. He knows he's in trouble. He has it right there. So now he's chained up. Stannis is there with Tycho, the bank, from the guy from the Iron Bank. And the Iron Bank asking Stannis to take the debt of Joffrey, of Robert, and, C and Cersei in order to get money. And Stannis agrees to do this for them. And signs in his own blood because it's so cold outside. So not like the show, how Stannis go, they have the show, how they have Stannis going and asking them. The real way is, and the real thing that happened, is they came to Stannis, as we see right here. So then he has his guy go to get his trusted knight, Justin Massey. Be my pleasure. The Iron Bank is always glad to be of service. The banker bowed. As he left, another entered. A knight. The king's knights had been coming and going all night, Theon recalled dimly. This one seemed to be the king's familiar. Lean, dark-haired, hard-eyed, his face marred by pockmarks and old scars. He wore a faded surcoat embroidered with three moths. Sire, he announced, the meister is without, and Lord Olnoff sends word that he would be most pleased to break his fast with you. The son as well, and the grandsons. Lord Will seeks audience as well. He wants. I know what he wants. The king indicated Theon. Him. Wool wants him dead. Flint, Nori, all of them will want him dead. For the boys he slew, vengeance for their precious Ned. Will you oblige them? Just now, the turncloak is more used to me alive. He has knowledge we may need. Now. You see these guys, they come in there and they're trying to get Stannis to execute Theon. That's what they want. The reason why they want Stannis to execute Theon is because they know that Theon knows that this dude, that they are working with the Boltons. So they're trying to play it off like they want him dead for Ned's son. But Stannis is too smart for this and he sees through the ruse and it's like, no, he's too valuable for me right now. And that's how he goes there. Bring in this meester. The king plucked a parchment off the table and squinted over it. A letter, Theon knew. Its broken seal is black wax, hard and shiny. I know what that says, he thought, giggling. Stannis looked up. The town cloak stirs. Theon, my name is Theon. He had to remember his name. I know your name. I know what you did. I saved her. The outer wall of Winterfell was eighty feet high, but beneath the spot where he had jumped, the snows had piled up to a depth of more than forty. A cold white pillow. The girl had taken the worst of it. Jane. Her name is Jane, but she will never tell them. Deanna had landed on top of her and broken some of her ribs. I saved the girl, he said. We flew. Stannis snorted. You fell. Umber saved her. Morris, Crowfoon, and his men had not been outside the castle, Bolton would have had the both of you in moments. Crowfoon, Dion remembered. An old man, huge and powerful, with a ruddy face and a shaggy white beard. He had been seated on a garren, clad in the pelt of a gigantic snow bear, its head his hood. 
Under it, he wore a stained white leather eye patch that reminded Theon of his uncle, Euron. He'd wanted to rip it off Umber's face to make certain that underneath was only an empty socket, not a black eye shining with malice. Instead, he had whimpered through his broken teeth and said, I am a turncloak and a kinslayer. Crowfoot had finished. You will hold... Now, people, when you hear that right there, uh, I'm going to say this real quick. You see, Theon obviously was saved by Morris Crowfoot and stuff like that. And, uh, this is how Stannis will learn about the trap set outside. Well, I think I'm jumping ahead of stuff like that. Play, play, out, play itself out. But uh, the black eye shining with malice being depicted as Euron. And that's what Theon thinks right there. So that's very important to know that Euron is, he sees him as the black eye patch. And then the black eye shining with malice underneath. Very, very important. All right. Hold that lying tongue or lose it. But Umber had looked at the girl closely, squinting down with his one good eye. You are the younger daughter? And Jane had nodded. Arya, my name is Arya. Arya Winterfell, I. When last I was inside those walls, your cook served us a steak and kidney pie, made with ale, I think. Best I ever tasted. What was his name, that cook? Gage. Jane said at once. He was a good cook. He would make lemon cakes for Sansa whenever we had lemons. Crow food had figured his beard. Dead now, I suppose. That's Smith Veers as well. A man who knew his steel. What was his name? Jane had hesitated. Micken, Theon thought. His name was Micken. The castle blacksmith had never made any lemon cakes for Sansa, which made him far less important than the castle cook in the sweet little world she had shared with her friend Jane Poole. Remember, damn you, your father was the steward. He had charge of the whole household. The smith's name is Micken. Micken, Micken. I had him put to death before me. Micken, Jane said. Moore's umber had grunted. Aye. What he might have said or done next, Theon never learned. For that was when the boy ran up, clutching a spear and shouting that the portcullis of Winterfell's main gate was rising. And how Crowfoot had grinned at that. So, Stannis. So now, this is how you know Stannis is the man. Stannis does not believe, right off the bat, Theon comes here with who he claims to be, Arya. But right off the bat, Stannis doesn't believe that. He doesn't just fall for that and take this man's word for it. But he does it slightly. He brings in, he doesn't know what this girl looks like. So he brings in, he brings in this dude. <laughs> um, to interrogate her. And she bangs the questions out because obviously she grew up in Winterfell, so she knew these, knows these people. But that just shows you that Stannis right there is being inquisitive. He's asking people. He's asking questions. He's not asking them directly. It's not him asking. He's having other people ask for him. And that's how we operate, Stannis. He doesn't have... He's the king. He's not going to directly question. Now, who is he she, to talk to the king? He just has this dude do it. And that's how we get Stan. So here we go. Now I'm twisting his chains and blinked down at the king. Crow food found us, yes. He sent us here to you, but it was me who saved her. Ask her yourself. She would tell him. You saved me, Janet whispered, as he was carrying her through the snow. She was pale with pain, but she had brushed one hand across his cheek and smiled. I saved Lady Arya, Theon whispered back at her, and then all at once Ora's umber spears were around them. Is this my thanks? He asked Stannis, kicking feebly against the wall. His shoulders were in agony. His own weight was tearing them from their sockets. How long had he been hanging here? Was it still night outside? The tower was windowless. He had no way to know. Unchain me, and I will serve you. As you serve Bruce Bolton and Rob Stark, Stannis snorted. I think not. We have a warmer end in mind for you, turn cloak. But not until we're done with you means to kill me. The thought was queerly comforting. Death did not frighten Theon Greyjoy. Death would mean an end to pain. Be done with me then, he urged the king. Take off my head and stick it on a spear. I slew Lord Eddard's sons. I ought to die, but do it quick. He is coming. Who's coming? Bolton? 
Lord Ramsay, Gaon hissed. The son, not the father. You must not let him take him, Roos. Roos is safe within the walls of Winterfell with his fat new wife. Ramsay is coming. Ramsay Snow, you mean. The bastard. Never call him that! Alright. So now we have Stannis chilling there, doing his thing. Theon there, talking to Stannis. So you have a little in engagement right here, right? So, Theon, he realizes these guys are going to kill him right there. He's got no chance to survive him. So, right then, he's like, all right, I got to think of something. So then, he tries to, uh, oh, uh, if you're going to do it, do it quick, because he's coming. Trying to bitch Stannis like Stannis is going to be afraid. And Stannis is like, who's coming, Ramsey, Bolton? And he's like, no, his son, Ramsey. So now, Theon, thinking of death, is starting to revert back to his Reek character. Now, he was Theon in, in the beginning, but now, with the fear of death in him, it's getting, bringing back the flashes of all the stuff that's happened to him, and now he's reverting back to Reek, hearing the name of Ramsey by him just saying it and stuff like that. It's, it's bringing him back to that, to that pain that he suffered and stuff like that. But as you see, Stannis does not fear anybody. Who is this kid? He's just a punk. Spittle sprayed from Theon's lips. Ramsey Bolton, not Ramsey Snow. Never Snow, never. You have to remember his name, or he will hurt you. He's welcome to try whatever name he goes by. The door opened with a gust of cold black wind and a swirl of snow. The knight of the mods had returned with the maester the king had sent for, his gray robes concealed beneath a heavy bearskin pelt. Behind them came two other knights, each carrying a raven in a cage. One was the man who'd been with Asha when the banker delivered him to her, a burly man with a winged pig on his surcoat. The other was taller broad-shouldered and brawny. The big man's breastplate was silvered steel and laid with niello. Though scratched and dented, it still shone in the candlelight. The cloak that he wore over it was fastened with a burning heart. Meister Tybold, announced the Knight of the Moths. The Meister sank to his knees. He was red-haired and round-shouldered, with close-set eyes that kept flicking toward Theon hanging on the wall. Your Grace! How may I be of service? Stannis did not reply at once. He studied the man before him, his brow furrowed. Gets up. The Meister rose. You are Meister the Dreadforth. How is it you are here with us? Lord Arnold brought me to tend to his wounded. To his wounded, or his ravens. Oh, your grace. Alright, so right here we see Stannis knows that... This guy spills the beans of who brought him here, that it's Arnulf that brought him here. And Stannis knows that this man is a Meister of the Dreadfort. So, reverting back to the pink letter again, and the reason why Stannis, I believe, wrote the pink letter. If you were wondering how he got the smear of pink wax, obviously he has the Meister of the Dreadfort in his clutches right here. And he knows who it is. And now this Meister has already spilled the beans just that quick of who brought him here. It's that quick. Obviously, Stannis knows already, but he just wants to see how honest this guy's going to be with him right off the bat. That was just the first initial question to see if this guy's going to try to just lie right off the bat. So here we go. And Stannis knows. So the guy goes, "What? why are you here? And, you know, he goes, oh, I'm here to tend to this guy's things. And he's like, I know you're here to tend to his ravens. And he's like, well, yeah, that's part of the job of being a mesa, too. And then here we go from that. Both. Stannis snapped the word out. A Meister's raven flies to one place and one place only. Is that correct? The Meister mops sweat from his brow at the sleeve. N not entirely, Your Grace. Most, yes. Some few can be taught to fly between two castles. Such birds are greatly prized. And once in a very great while, we find a raven who can learn the names of three or four or five castles and fly to each upon command. Birds as clever as that come along only once in a hundred years. All right, that's very that that's important. So now we basically learn how ravens go in Winterfell. We, I mean, in in this whole world, we really didn't know until this chapter right here how they go. So he says that they can find a raven that can go to one, two, three, four castles once in every hundred years, which is the exact amount of time. How many kids that have walking ability? are born one at, at, at every hundred years get walking and building and stuff like that so 
it's 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 basically saying that that a lot of these birds must still have walks in them, and that's why they're able to go to all these different castles and stuff like that. So that's basically so we know how the ravens go. That's what Santa's breaking down right now, and that's actually the first time, as I said before, that we learn exactly how ravens operate. How one goes to each castle. Stan is gestured at the blackbirds in the cages. These two are not so clever, I presume. Oh, Your Grace, would that it was so. Tell me then, where are these two trained to fly? Meister Tybal did not answer. Dion Greyjoy kicked his feet feebly and laughed under his breath. Cut! Answer me! If we were to loose these birds, would they return to the Dreadfort? The king leaned forward, or might they fly for Winterfell instead? Meister Tybal pissed his robes. Theon could not see the dark stain spreading from where he hung, but the smell of piss was sharp and strong. Meister Tybalt has lost his tongue. Stannis observed to his knights. Got All right. So right here we see Stannis has caught this man. He had three ravens and one is gone. And now he knows that these ravens do not fly to the dread fort because we know the ravens just go. They're kind of just like regular, you know, pigeons and stuff like that. They learn where they live and you let them go. And you bring them somewhere, and then you let them go, and they fly home. So that's what the birds do. So he knows that these birds are going back to Winterfell. And who is in Winterfell? That is where the Boltons are. So we remember that the Boltons received a letter in the Dance of Dragons book saying when they started, when everything started breaking down, um, uh, Roos reads, has the letter saying that he knows where Stannis is exactly. That Stannis is oh, only a two days ride away, and he snowed down inside this village and stuff like that. So we have to assume that that is the raven that this was sent from this dude right now, and Stannis has figured that out. Audrey, how many cages did you find? Three, Your Grace, said the big knight in the silver breastplate. One was empty. You, your Grace, my order is sworn to serve. We, I know all about your vows. What I want to know is what was in the letter that you sent to Winterfell. Did you perchance tell Lord Bolton where to find us? Sire? round shoulder Tybal drew himself up proudly. The rules of my order forbid me to divulge the contents of Lord Arnulf's letters. Your vows are stronger than your bladder, it would seem. Your grace must understand. Must I? The king shrugged. If you say so, you are a man of learning after all. I had a meister on Dragonstone who was almost a father to me. I have great respect for your order and its vows. Sir Clayton does not share my feelings, though. He learned all he knows in the winds of Flea Bottom. Were I to put you in his charge, he might strangle you with your own chain or scoop your eye out with a spoon. Only one, your grace, volunteered the balding knight, him of the winged pig. I leave Dada. How many eyes does a beast need to read a letter? asked Stannis. One should suffice, I think. I would not wish to leave you unable to fulfill your duties to your lord. Bruce Bolton's men may well be on their way to attack us even now, however. So you must understand if I skimp on certain courtesies. I will ask you once again. What was in the message you sent to Winterfell? The maester quivered. A m map your grace. The king leaned back in his chair. Get him out of here, he commanded. So now Leave Stannis does know. A vein was throbbing in his neck. He does know that Bruce Bolton has a man. And he tells him specifically, it will be Leave done, the ravens. The big knight declared. The meister vanished in another blast of cold and snow. Only in the night of the three moths remained. Stannis glowered up at Theon where he hung. You are not the only turncloak here, it would seem. Would that all the lords and the Seven Kingdom had but a single neck. He turned to his knight. Sir Richard, whilst I am breaking fast with Lord Ornolf, you are to disarm his men and take them into custody. Most would be asleep. Do them no harm, unless they resist. And maybe they did not know. Question some upon that point, but sweetly. If they had no knowledge of this treachery, they shall have the chance to prove their loyalty. He snapped a hand in dismissal. Send in Justin Massey. Another night, Theon knew, when Massey entered. This one was fair. 
with a neatly trimmed blonde beard and thick straight hair so pale it seemed more white than gold. His tunic bore the triple spiral, an ancient sigil for an ancient house. So now Stannis has Justin Massey, his number one guy, coming in there. But before that, he has to go off and take the Car Stark's men because he knows that. Obviously, he tells Theon, you're not the only turn cloak. He knows that this dude is dirty. So now he's going to un un take, take his forces down real quick. So this was the plan of Bruce Bolton and them to, to take to see Stannis, and the plan has failed. This, like everything else that people have pitted against them, it always fails. And that is the bottom line. So now Stannis has these men, and now he has Justin Massey come in there. I was told your grace had need of me, he said from one knee. Stannis nodded. You will escort the Bravosi banker back to the wall. Choose six good men and take twelve horses. To ride or eat. The king was not amused. I want you gone before midday, sir. Lord Bolton could be on as any moment, and it is imperative that the banker return to Bravos. You shall accompany him across the narrow sea. If there is to be a battle, my place is here with you. Your place is where I say it is. I have five hundred swords as good as you, or better, but you have a pleasing manner and a glib tongue, and those will be of more use to me at Bravos than here. The Iron Bank has opened its coffers to me. You will collect their coin and hire ships and sell swords, a company of good repute, if you can find one. The Golden Company would be my first choice, if they are not already under contract. Seek for them in the disputed lands, if need be, but first hire as many swords as you can find in Bravos, and send them to me by way of Eastwatch. Archers as well. All right, so now he has Stannis' day. He's telling Justin Massey right now, I got the money from the Iron Bank. I need you to go to Browse. He says, I want you to be here. He says, listen, you are going where I'm telling you to go. And that's the bottom line. So, because you're a pretty boy and you will be able to charm people and you have a good, nice way that you talk, a good manner about you. Can't send no brute guy. That's not for the job. He has guys that can fight, he need, but he doesn't have a lot of guys that can be negotiators and politicians. So he wants them to go there and get these troops and bring them back to each watch is where he wants them to come to, right? He wants to end, but first he says get the, the, uh, the Brave Companions, uh, and not the Brave Companions, the Golden Company, but we know that they're already taken so we can't go there. He doesn't know that. So then he says, um, after, after to get them to go to Bravos. Now this brings in, our, obviously we know Ari is there from the Mercy chapter. So this brings in Arya and possibly a way back from over there back to Westeros for Arya after she had committed that murder. Now we know Justin Massey is in route, which is perfect because obviously Justin Massey and Stannis are working with Jon and working with Rickon because Davos is off there and Stagos getting Rickon right now, which Stannis does not know. So it all br would come together and bring the Starks back together under Stannis Baratheon. We need more bows. Sir Justin's hair had fallen down across one eye. He pushed it back and said, The captains of the free companies would join a lord more readily than a mere knight, your grace. I hold neither lands nor title. Why should they sell their swords to me? Go to them with both fists full of golden dragons, the king said in an acid tone. That should prove persuasive. Twenty thousand men should suffice. Do not return with fewer. Sire, might I speak freely? So long as you speak quickly, your grace should go to Bravos with the banker. Is that your counsel, that I should flee? The king's face darkened. That was your counsel in the Blackwater as well, as I recall, when the battle turned against us. I let you and Horp chivy me back to Dragonstone like a whipped cur. Day was lost, your grace. I... That was what you said. The day is lost, sire. Fall back now that you may fight again. And now you would have me scamper off across the narrow sea. To raise an army, aye, as Bittersteel did after the Battle of the Red Grass Field, where Damon Blackfire fell. Do not pray at me of history, sir. Damon Blackfire was a rebel and usurper. Bittersteel a bastard. When he fled, he swore he would return to place his son of demons upon the Iron Throne. He never did. 
Words are wind, a wind that blows exiles across the narrow sea seldom blows them back. That boy, Viserys Targaryen, spoke of return as well. He slipped through my fingers at Dragonstone, only to spend his light wheedling after sell swords. The bigger king, they called him in the free cities. Well, I do not beg, nor will I flee again. I'm Rob. Alright, you get a lot right there from Stannis. He gives you the history of the Blackfires and how these dudes tried to rebel and then had to, had to go across the narrow sea. And this, listen to what he's saying. These people tried to rebel unsuccessfully. They failed. They and Blackfire failed across back to the narrow sea. You got the beggar king. Viserys, where is he? He had to go across the narrow sea. His bid for the for the kingdom didn't even get get on track. He couldn't even control the Thraki. So basically, he failed. So it seems that any one of these Targaryens that are over there on the across the narrow sea that try to come back and take the throne, what has happened to them? They have all failed. And Danny, I think she will be the next one to fail. When it's all said and done. And I think that's what you could take from that bit of thing like that. And you could also see that Stannis did not want to retreat on Blackwater. He was dragged off the battlefield like a true commander. Even though the battle seemed to be lost. He still thought he could possibly pull it off. And who knows? Maybe he could have. But he did not stay because he listened to his troops. But he's not going to listen to him again this time. Because remember, he listened to his troops. He listened to Davos not to bring Melisandre. And if he would have listened to listen to Melisandre, he would he would he would have won that battle. So right now, he's not listening to them. He's doing what he wants to do, trusting his own instinct. But there, the rightful king of West Arrows. My place is with my men. Yours is in Bravos. Go with the banker and do as I have bid, as you command. Sir Justin said. It may be that we shall lose this battle, the king said grimly. In Bravos, you may hear that I am dead. It may even be true. You shall find my cell swords nonetheless. The knight hesitated. Your grace, if you are dead, you will avenge my death and see my daughter on the Iron Throne or die in the attempt. Sir Justin put one hand in his sword hilt. On my honor as a knight, you have my word. Oh, and take the stalker with you. Deliver as the Lord Commander Snow on your way to Eastwatch. Stannis tapped the parchment that lay before him. A true king pays his debts. Pay it, I, thought Theon. Pay it with false coin. Jon Snow would see through the imposture at once. Alright, so right here we have Stannis sending Massey to the wall before he goes off to Eastwatch to drop off who he believes is Arya to Jon Snow. So we're going to have Massey going up there. So now we're going to know. So basically, it just also sets up again Arya coming back. Because when he gets there and drops off this chick, he's going to know that that's not Arya that he dropped off. So when he goes to Bravos and meets Arya, if Arya says, I'm Arya Stark, he'll believe her that she really is because he'll know that he dropped it. The other chick was a fake. You know what I mean? So... That's what that sets up right there. Lord Stark solid back. And obviously, I'm sorry, the biggest thing, the pink letter, once again. You hear him tell him right there. We, I, You may hear that I'm dead. It may even be true. Even if you hear that, still get my troops. In the pink letter, you see that it says that Stannis is dead. And obviously, he's not. So... It just goes that Stannis is plotting this whole thing, the pink letter, right now. He's beginning to get ready to send this off. Think about sending it off and stuff like that. I started to know Jane Poole, and he had always been fond of his little half-sister, Arya. The Black Brothers will accompany you as far as Castle Black, the king went on. The Iron Man are to remain here, supposedly to fight for us. Another gift from Tycho Nestoris. Just as well... They would only slow you down. Iron men were made for ships, not horses. Lady Arya should have a female companion as well. Take Ella Sane Mormont. Sir Justin pushed back his hair again. And Lady Asha. The king considered that a moment. No. 
One day your grace will need to take the Iron Islands. That would go much easier with Balon Greyjoy's daughter as a cat's paw, with one of your own leal men as her lord husband. You? The king scowled. The woman is wed, Justin. A proxy marriage, never consummated, easily set aside. The groom is all besides, like to die soon. From a sword through his belly, if you have your way, so... So basically we have right here Justin Massey trying to get the Island Islands. Now we know in the Dance of Dragons chapter that Justin Massey has protected Asha Greyjoy already. And uh, he's already had a little thing with her, talking to her and stuff like that. And falling, maybe she's falling for him, but not really. She's just using him as a protector and she needs him right there. But remember, he does get bitched down real quick at one point. There. So, but here you see him making this ploy to Stannis that he wants to take it with her because he wants to take her to, to have the Iron 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 Iron, iron Islands. <laughs> Whew, got that out. So, that's his play that he's going for right there. Worm, Theon knew how these knights thought. Stannis pressed his lips together. Serve me well in this matter of the cell swords, and you may have what you desire. Until such time, the woman must needs remain my captive. Sir Justin bowed his head. And Stannis agrees. So if Matthew comes can. back, your understanding is not required. You can say right there. Only obedience. Be on your way. I'm sorry. You see, Stannis is like, listen, don't just do what I tell. That's all I need from you. But right there, you see, if he comes back. What he's promising, Stannis is saying, he'll give her, he'll see what's good with Asher Greyjoy, let him marry her. So that makes you think that he's not going to kill Asher Greyjoy. He has no intention of killing her at all. Sir, this time, when the knight took his leave, the world beyond the door seemed more white than black. Stannis Baratheon paced the floor. The tower was a small one, dank and cramped. A few steps brought the king around to Theon. How many men does Bolton have at Winterfell? Five thousand. Six. More. He gave the king a ghastly grin. All shattered teeth and splinters. More than you. How many of those is he like to send against us? No more than half. That was a guess, admittedly, but it felt right to him. Bruce Bolton was not a man to blunder blindly out into the snow, map or no. He would hold his main strength in reserve, keep his best men with him, trust in Winterfell's massive double wall. The castle was too crowded. Men were at each other's throats, the Manderleys and Freys especially. It's them his lordship sent after you, the ones that he's well rid of. Why then, Manderly? The king's... All right, so right here we see that Theon spills the beans again. He tells Stannis that the Freys and Mandalays are not getting along, that they're fighting, and that Roos sent them out here to fight, and he's selling 2,500 troops out to get Stannis right now, half of his forces. Now Stannis knows that the Freys and Mandalays don't really like each other. He knows that. He spills the beans on that. Boom. So this, I think, ha comes into play when I think the battle does actually take place, that he'll know not to when he sees the Mandalese killing the Freys, he'll know already not to kill the Mandalese. That would make him not want to kill them because the Freys will come first. And stuff like that. So I think that's what that plays on there. Mouth twisted in contempt. Lord, too fat to sit a horse. Too fat to come to me. Yet he comes to Winterfell. Too fat to bend the knee and swear me his sword. Yet now he wields that sword for Bolton. I sent my onion lord to treat with them. And lord, too fat, butchered him. And mounted his head and hands on the walls of White Harbor for the phrase to gloat over. And the phrase, has the Red Wedding been forgotten? The North remembers the Red Wedding, Lady Hornwood's fingers, the sack of Winterfell, Deepwood Mott, and Torrent Square. They remember all of it. Bran and Rickon, they were only Miller's boys. Frey and Mandalays will never combine their strengths. They will come for you, but separately. Lord Ramsay will not be far behind them. He wants his bride back. He wants his reek. Dion's laugh was half a titter, half a whimper. Lord Ramsay is the one your grace should fear. Stannis bristled at that. I defeated your uncle Victorian and his iron fleet off Fair Isle. The first time your father crowned himself, I held Storm's End against the power of the Reach for a year and took Dragonstone from the Targaryens. I smashed Mance Raider at the wall, though he had twenty times my number. Tell me, Turncloak. What 
battles has the bastard of Bolton ever won that I should fear him. You must not call him that. A wave of pain washed over Theon Greyjoy. He closed his eyes and grimaced. When he opened them again, he said, You do not know him. No more than he knows me. Knows me? cried one of the ravens the maester had left behind. All right. So, you hear Stannis just lay down the red of Zemay and why he do what he do. He smashed the Greyjoys. He defeated Mance Raider with 20 times his hoes. He held storms and what has Ramsey Bolton done? Nothing. He has won no battles. He has done nothing at all. He sent Theon in to do his dirty work when he ever had a chance to do anything. So basically, this is not a proven field commander. Not at all. He is not tactically sound as Stannis Baratheon is. And basically now we hear the first chiming in of the raven knows me out of nowhere. Now this raven is in the room watching. And I believe this raven to be Bran. It flapped its big black wings against the bars of its cage. Knows! It cried again. Stannis turned. Stop that noise! Behind him the door opened. The car storks had arrived. Bent and twisted, the castellan of Carhold leaned heavily on his cane as he made his way to the table. Lord Olnoff's cloak was fine gray wool, bordered in black sable and clasped with a silver starburst. A rich garment. Real quick before Lord Olnoff gets in there. The reason why, now it's funny though, that I think that this is Bran in this thing. Because he just had the conversation, remember, with the maester. And then he said to the guy, and the guy was like, well if you get a ma you, one of these birds can, uh can be a bird that can fly to five, six different different places one in a hundred years. And Sanders goes, well, one of these birds ain't that, right? And the guy goes, yeah. And actually, right now, it is that bird that can fly all over the place and stuff like that. So I think that's ironic, and I think that's why they put that there. Theon thought on a poor excuse for a man. He had seen that cloak before, he knew, just as he had seen the man who wore it at the Dreadfort, I remember he sat and supped with Lord Ramsay in Whore's Bay Number the night they brought Reek up from his cell. The man beside him could only be his son, fifty, Theon judged, with a round, soft face like his father's. If Lord Arnoff went to fat, behind him walked three younger sons, the grandsons, he surmised. One wore a chainmail Bernie. The rest were dressed for breakfast, not for battle. Fools. Your Grace, Arnoff Costar bowed his head. An honor. He looked for a seat. Instead, his eyes found Theon. And who is this? Recognition came a heartbeat later. Lord Arnoff paled. His stupid son remained oblivious. Don of chairs! The wolf observed. One of the ravens screamed inside its cage. Only mine. King Stannis saddened. It is no iron throne, but here and now it suits. A dozen men had filed through the tower door led by the net of the moths and the big man and the silver breastplate. You are dead men. Understand that, the king went on. Only the manner of your dying remains to be determined. You would be well advised not to waste my time with denials. Confess, and you shall have the same swift end that the young wolf gave Lord Rickard. Lie, and you will burn. Choose. I choose this. One of the grandsons seized his sword Stupid. hilt and made to draw it. That proved to be a poor choice. The grandson's blade had not even cleared his scalp before two of the king's knights were on him. It ended with his forearm flopping in the dirt and blood spurting from his stump, and one of his brothers stumbling in for the stairs, clutching a belly wound. He staggered up six steps before he fell and came crashing back down to the floor. Neither Arnav Karstark nor his son had moved. Take them away, the king commanded. The sight of them sours my stomach. Within moments, the five men had been bound and removed. The one who had lost his sword arm had fainted from loss of blood, but his brother with the belly wound screamed loud enough for both of them. This is how I deal with the drill, turned cloak. Stannis informed Theon. My name is Theon, as you will. Tell me, Theon, how many men did Moore's Umber have with him at Winterfell? None. All right, so... You see Stannis right now, he has figured out the Karstark's treachery, brings him up in there, 
and this dude's trying to be stupid, and the guy gets his arm chopped, chopped off. And the reason why he did this is he did this right in front of Theon to let Theon know how he gets down, how what's going to happen, and it's that happens that quick. And as soon as he is done, he questions Theon right then. How many men did Moors or uh, old Moors over have at Winterfell? Right off the back, he wants to know that. No men. He grinned at his own wit. He had boys. I saw them. Aside from a handful of half-crippled sergeants, the warriors the Crowfoot had brought down from last hearth were hardly old enough to shave. Their spears and axes were older than the hands that clutched them. It was Horse Bay Number who had the men inside the castle. I saw them too. Old men. Every one. The untethered. Moors took the green boys and Hartha took the gray beards. All the real men went with the great John and died at the Red Wedding. Is that what you wanted to know, Your Grace? King Stannis ignored the jive. Boys, as always said, disgusted. Boys will not hold Lord Bolton long. Not long, Dion agreed. Not long at all. Not long, cried the raven from its cage. All right, so now Stannis knows that Bolton will be upon him sooner than later because obviously there's only green boys there and they won't be there for that long. And then you hear the raven again chimes in. Once again, at that time, saying not long again. The king gave the bird an irritated look. That Bravosi banker claims Serenus Bray is dead. Did some boy do that? Twenty green boys with spades, Theon told him. The snow fell heavily for days, so heavily that you could not see the castle walls ten yards away. No more than the men up in the battlements could see what was happening beyond those walls. So Crufood set his boys to digging pits outside the castle gates, then blew his horn to lure Lord Bolton out. Instead, he got the phrase. The snow had covered up the pits, so they rode right into them. Anus broke his neck, I heard, but Sir Hostine only lost a horse. So now you hear Stannis gets... You hear Stannis. Here's what exactly how they conquered the phrase. That they put the pits... And Anus Frey broke his neck, the, the biggest, strongest one out of them all. And he broke his neck, running into the pits because they could not see the holes because of the snow that has fell. And that is very important. Now, you see Stannis' plan developing in his head of how he's winning this battle. More's the pity he would be angry now. Strangely, Stannis smiled. Angry foes do not concern me. Anger makes men stupid. And Hostine Frey was stupid to begin with. If half of what I have heard of him is true, let him come. He will. Bolton is blundered, the king declared. All he had to do was sit inside his castle whilst we starve. Instead, he has sent some portion of his strength forth to give us battle. His knights will be horsed. Ours must fight afoot. His men will be well nourished. Ours go into battle with... So right here, Stannis knows that both is fucked up by sending these dudes out. And he knows that his guys are coming horsed. They're coming on horses to Stannis. He knows that. He knows his guys are on foot. He knows that these guys are going to be coming with full bellies. They're coming in there swaggering, yeah, this is no problem. And his guys are coming starving. And that's basically, like I said, if you listen to a, a, my other video of, about how I feel Stannis will take Winterfell, this is right here, death ground. That's Sung Su said, when you put somebody on death ground, they will fight like there is no tomorrow. And when you're starving, and there's nowhere to run, and these guys are charging at you, you have no choice but to fight. And Stannis knows this right now. And he realized Bolton fucked up and he has the upper hand. Empty bellies. It makes no matter. Sir Stupid. Lord Too Fat. The Bastard. Let them come. We hold the ground. And that I mean to turn to our advantage. The ground? Said Theon. What ground here? This misbegotten tower. This wretched little village. You have no high ground here. No walls to hide behind. No natural defenses. Yet, yet, both ravens screamed in unison. So when you hear, now that's both ravens scream in unison. So now we have Blood Raven and Bran and both ravens watching them at that time. 
So remember before we just had Bran. Now we have Bran and Blood Raven at this scene, both watching Stannis. Why are they watching Stannis? Why aren't they watching other things? This must be the most important thing going on to them. All right, to Bran and Blood Raven right now. And you see, Stannis says he has the he has the ground. He has no natural defenses. Theon says, and he says yet. And now you knew before that he seen that these dudes fell into the pit. Now we know that they have been fishing the pits, the the ice lakes that is right there, and and all and there's a lot of holes in there. And he knows that those guys are coming on horses. So there's no way we have to think that Stannis these is plans to lure these people right into the the lakes, the frozen lakes that they did before with the horses and have them sink right into the lake. There's no other way to think that the battle will end any other way from that comment. And one quarant, and the other muttered, Tree! 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 The door opened. Beyond the world was white. The knight of the three mods entered, his legs caked with snow. He stomped his feet to knock it off and said, Your grace, the cost stocks are taken. A few of them resisted and died for it. Most were too confused and yielded quietly. We've herded them all into the long hall and can find them there. Well done. They say they did not know the ones we've questioned. They would. We might question them more sharply. No. I believe them. Carl Stark could never have hoped to keep his treasury a secret if he shared his plans with every baseborn man jack in his service. Some drunken spearman would have let it slip one night, whilst slaying with a whore. They did not need to know. They are carhold men. When the moment came, they would have obeyed their laws, as they have done all their lives. As you say, sire. What of our own losses? One of Lord Peasbury's men was killed, and two of mine were wounded. If it please your lord, though the men are growing anxious, there are hundreds of them gathered round the tower, wondering what's happened. Talk of treason is on every lip. No one knows who to trust, or who might be arrested next. The Northmen especially. I need to talk with them. Is Wool still waiting? Him and Arto Splint, will you see them? Shortly. The Kraken first. As you command. The knight took his leave. My sister... Dion thought, my sweet sister. Though he'd lost all feeling in his arms, he felt the twisting in his gut. The same as when that bloodless Bravosi banker presented him to Asha as a gift. The memory still rankled. The burly, balding knight who'd been with her had wasted no time shouting for help, so they'd had no more than a few moments before Theon was dragged away to face the king. That was long enough. He'd hated the look in Asha's face when she realized who he was. The shock in her eyes, the pity in her voice. The way her mouth twisted in disgust. Instead of rushing forward to embrace him, she had taken half a step backwards. Did the bastard do this to you? She had asked. Don't you call him that! Then the words came spilling out of the end in a rush. He tried to tell her all of it, about Reek and the dread fort, and Kyra and the keys. How Lord Ramsay never took anything but skin unless you begged for it. He told her how he'd saved the girl, leaping from the castle wall into the snow. We flew. Let Abel make a song of that. We flew. Then he had to say who Abel was and talk about the washerwomen who weren't truly washerwomen. By then, Theon knew how strange and incoherent all this sounded, yet somehow the words would not stop. He was cold and sick and tired and weak, so weak, so very weak. She has to understand. She is my sister. He never wanted to do any harm to Bran or Rickon. Reek made him kill those boys, not him reek but the other one all right so basically you know we see here that this is how stannis knows about abel and the spearwise and mance raider in the thing theon just blabbing blah 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 blah, 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 blah blabbing. so that's how he knows all about that and then you see that theon in this nuggets comparing himself to reek who is really not the real reek it's ramsey reek but he doesn't know that there's another reek so he's not saying him reek it's really Ramsey Reek that he's thinking of, that Reek, but not him Reek, the Ramsey Reek, not the real Reek, because the real Reek was dead, and Ramsey took the size of the real Reek and got captured in Winterfell, and that's basically how that goes. I am no kinslayer, he insisted. He told her how he bedded down with Ramsey's bitches, warned her that Winterfell was full of ghosts. The swords were gone, four, I think, or five, I don't recall. The Stone Kings are angry. He was shaking by then, trembling like an autumn leaf. The, 
that goes to the Ghost of Winterfell. So the Ghost of Winterfell, the swords are gone, four or five. So we know that the other people took the swords, but then there was an extra sword that was missing one of them and stuff like that, because we know that uh, Brandon took the swords when it left, but then there's one extra one that was missing. And that goes to who the Ghost of Winterfell is. But that doesn't exactly tell you who the Ghost of Winterfell is, so I will not tell you who the Ghost of Winterfell is at that time, because it doesn't tell you that right there. Archery knew my name, the old gods, Theon. I heard them whisper. There was no wind, but the leaves were moving. Theon, they said. My name is Theon. He was good to say the name. The more he said it, the less like he was to forget. You have to know your name, he told his sister. You, you told me you were Estrid, but that was a lie. Your name is Asha. It is, his sister had said, so softly that he was afraid that she might cry. Theon hated that. He hated women weeping. Jane Poole had wept all the way from Winterfell to here, wept until her face was purple as a beetroot, and the tears had frozen on her cheeks, and all because he told her that she must be Arya, or else the wolves might send them back. They trained you in a brothel, he reminded her, whispering in her ears so the others would not hear. Jane is the next thing to a whore. You must go on being Arya. Next thing he meant no hurt to her. her. <laughs> it was for her own good and his. She has to remember her name. When the tip of her nose turned black from frostbite, and one of the riders from the Night's Watch told her she might lose a piece of it, Jane had wept over that as well. No one will care what Arya looks like, so long as she is heir to Winterfell. He assured her. A hundred men will want to marry her. A thousand. The memory left Theon writhing in his chains. Let me down, he pleaded, just for a little while. Then you can hang me up again. Stannis Baratheon looked up at him, but did not answer. Tree, a raven cried. Tree, tree. Then another bird said, Theon. All right. So basically, let's look at this. Now, remember I told you, a lot of people didn't catch that before, but hopefully you caught it, and I hope you know. So we have Blood Raven and Bran in both birds. Ironically, as Dad said before, it takes one in every hundred years. These birds weren't the one. Now, instead of having one, he has two of them. So the first bird says Tree. The second bird says Theon. So the first bird is Blood Raven, all right? The second one is Bran, because he knows his name. He's saying Theon. Theon said before that he heard the tree before say his name, and he heard it whisper in the, in the winds. That was Bran. So now Bran's saying his name again. So Blood Raven is trying to get Theon to the tree, right? He's trying to get him over there. So you have to understand that that's what that's what's going on there. Whoop. Clear as day, as Asher came striding through the door, Quarrel the maid was with her, and Christopher Botley. Deanna had known Botley since they were boys together back on Pike. Why has she brought her pets? Does she mean to cut me free? They would end the same way as the car starts if she tried. The king was displeased by their presence as well. Your gods may wait without. If I meant harm to you, two men would not dissuade me. The Ironborn bowed in retreat. Asha took a knee. Your grace, must my brother be chained like that? It seems a poor reward for bringing you the stock, girl. The king's mouth twitched. You have a bold tongue, my lady. Not unlike your turncloak brother. Thank you, your grace. It was not a compliment. Stannis gave Theon a long look. The village lacks a dungeon. and have more prisoners than I anticipated will be halted here. He waved Asha to her feet. You may rise. She stood. The Bravosi ransomed seven of my men from Lady Glover. I would gladly pay a ransom for my brother. There is not enough gold in all your iron islands. Your brother's hands are soaked with blood. Farin is urging me to give him to Rilor. Clayton Suggs as well, I do not doubt. Him, Corliss Penny, all the rest. Even Sir Richard here, who only loves the Lord of Light when it suits his purposes. The Red God's choir only knows a single song. So long as the song is pleasing in God's ears, let them sing. Lord Bolton's men will be here sooner than we would wish. 
only Mozamba stands between us, and your brother tells me his levies are made up entirely of green boys. Men like to know their god is with them when they go into battle. Not all your men worship the same god. I am aware of this. I am not the fool my brother was. Theon is my mother's last surviving son. When his brothers died, it shatters her. His death will crush what remains of her. But I have not come to beg you for his life. Wise. Sorry for your mother, but I do not spare the lives of turncloaks. Now, if you wonder why he said um, he's not the fool his brother was, he's saying that because Thoros and Mia came to him before and tried to get him to convert to the Lord of Light and Robert Baratheon wasn't having it. So Sam is saying he's not that fool. He'll take the Lord of Light's help and he's not going to allow this people just to have one, one just to pray to one God. You could pray to any God you want as long as you do what he says and serve the purpose. You're not hurting anybody. It doesn't matter who you pray to. Just respect everybody's wishes. Asha is here trying to negotiate to get Dion, but he can't let let him go because he has a bunch of people that wants to kill kill him, and he 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 needs these guys on his side. So at this particular time, he has no choice. He cannot let him go. This one, especially, he slew two sons of Edard Stark. Every Northman in my service would abandon me if I showed him any clemency. Your brother must die. And do the deed yourself, Your Grace. The chill in Asha's voice made Theon shiver in his chains. Take him out across the lake to the islet where the weirwood grows and strike his head off with that sorceress sword you bear. That is how Eddard Stark would have done it. Theon slew Lord Eddard's sons. Give him to Lord Eddard's gods, the old gods of the north. Give him to the tree. And suddenly there came a wild thumping as the Meister's ravens hopped and flapped inside their cages, their black feathers flying as they beat against the bars. Asha inadvertently says, kill my brother by the tree, which is what both of them want him to do. They want to sacrifice him to the tree. And they're just like, oh my God, she just did it. So now they're going crazy, like, oh, the birds, Brandon, and Blood Rose. Like, oh my God, she just said, yes, listen to her, listen to her, listen to her. Bring him to the tree, take him to the tree. With loud and raucous cause. The tree! One squawked. The tree! The tree! Whilst the second screamed only. Theon! 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 Theon Greyjoy smiled. They know my name, he thought. Boom! So there you go. That's the end of that. So these birds, you have Blood Raven saying, take him to the tree, and Bran saying, Theon, knowing his name. And Theon saying, they know his name. And happy that they know his name because he's heard, talked to him before and they knew his name and you have Stannis saying Theon will be executed so basically I think it's them trying to get Blood Raven them trying to get the strength I think from Theon's King's blood into the Weirwood why Blood Raven needs that strength to do that I don't know but if you look at the last Bran chapter that's what he is shown when he looks back he is shown the, the sacrifice on the Weirwood tree. I don't think there's been sacrifices like that on Weirwood tree in a very long time. I think that's why Blood Raven has wilted away, and I think he needs his strength back, and he needs that King's Blood of Theon, and that's what he's going there for. All right, I hope that is helps out everybody with this chapter. I'll try to do every chapter the same way. The Theon that um, Theon sample chapter, sample chapter from when to winter. And this is, I got, and that was, the words are when is the person who narrated that. So if you want to look at any uh, of his other stuff, he has every one of them he has done, words are when. And I like his stuff, that's why I listen to it and stuff like that. So, as always, I'm going to try to get back to you and do a lot, a lot of stuff. And uh, when, when the season's over, I'll still be doing videos and stuff like that. And come up with a whole bunch of stuff so we try to do the Windsor winner every chapter to try to get us geared up to the release of I guess Elio Garcia and them's book is the next big thing before we get the Windsor winner itself so as always it's the Don Cheer Tony Teflon House Teflon Teflon 316 we pull the strings peace I'm out people's chair